Welcome back to Unperfect with Alexi. This is the perfect place for imperfect people. And today I have something very vulnerable, it feels, to share. Um, and that is about my relationship with alcohol, alcohol, alcohol and the journey that I have been on with it and how I got to being one month sober from alcohol. I'm California sober, let's be real. But sober from alcohol. So to give you guys a little bit of context before we start, I alcoholism is something that runs in my maternal side of the family so I mean it's been generations and generations and generations of the typical like alcoholic father who leaves the mother to do everything with all the kids and the homestead and everything and um, I mean there's even been instances in my lineage of the father leaving completely like nobody knows what happened like there's just so much trauma and disparity because of alcohol and I saw it first in my maternal side with my great aunt. She, I mean, I've never remembered her not being an alcoholic. I remember she would be the only person at Christmas who would have alcohol and she'd be drinking these like big tall boys of this nasty cheap beer. And I remember being like, oh, she's cool. But also you could see it on her, like very on edge, very, um, you could just see the trauma, like coming out of her and she had a very traumatic life like the things that happened to her and in her childhood and then to her kids like it's just something like unimaginable things but it was never dealt with it was never addressed it was never worked through the alcohol just numbed it down that was the pill that was the cure for her and her life to make it a little bit more bearable luckily at the end of her life she did quit drinking and that was amazing. Um, and I think that it was really healing for everybody in our family, but I had also seen it from my dad, my whole childhood. My dad was on, he was an alcoholic. He did meth. He, I think he said that he had like tried heroin one time or like smoked it or something, but my dad was kind of like the party guy. And you know, like the, the person who like didn't really want responsibilities. And it was really hard because by the time I was like five, I think my parents had divorced. So I was raised by a single mom. My dad had moved down to California and he was doing whatever down there and then moved back up and then living on a boat. And then I remember one time vividly like this, I think I can talk about this. Um, cause I mean, it's my experience too. But um, one time my dad lived on a boat at this marina and my sister and I, we were in elementary school probably, and we had came to stay the night with him and the boat, the bathroom, I don't think the boat had a bathroom, but they had these little like stalls outside of the marina. So you, outside of the dock. So you get off the dock, go up this little rail thing, go out of the gated boat entrance. And then there's these little restrooms right outside of the door. So my sister one night, she went to the bathroom and it was a cold, dark, rainy night. And my dad had left to a party on another boat in the marina. And my sister was like banging on the door, like, let me in, let me in. And I was sleeping or I, I didn't hear her and I didn't get her. And my dad came back and he was just like devastated, heartbroken that he did that. But again, when you are so deep in the alcohol and using that as your coping mechanism and you don't know how to cope with life, in any other way, alcohol is the easy way to just keep trudging through and keep getting through things. So that was a lot of my memories of my my childhood. Like I remember one time my dad picked us up in this van that he had and he had a he had supposedly stopped drinking and then he had like a six pack of beer in the van. And I remember being like afraid of it at that rate and being like, oh, my gosh, mom, dad, dad has alcohol and he's not supposed to be drinking. If you can see me on video, I'm waving at my dog. She's outside. And barking at me if you hear her. But um, yeah, I, I just remember the relationship with it. Like I was afraid of it. But then fast forward to when I turned 12 and shit started hitting the fan in my life. And my dad had a stroke. And my mom, who was a single mom, like she had to go back to work. And, um, you know, work like a regular job. She was working nights and we were with our grandparents a lot in elementary school. But in middle school, she had to go back to her work at a department store. So, um, we were alone a lot and I being the rebellious second child who has no fear and just, you know, fuck it, whatever, and not learning from other people, 
I started drinking and the first time I ever drank and or smoked pot was when I was 12 years old. I also lost my virginity at 12 years old and that, oh my God, it's really sad because now I have nieces who are 12, you know, and it's like, they're so little. I just, I think back. I think back to that 12 year old version of me who just wanted to be loved so badly. I would do anything to get it and I would look anywhere for it. And I mean, it sucks, but it's a part of my story and I just, uh, I wish I could go back and just know what I know now, but at the end of the day, we only know what we know then. Like we were just doing the best we could at the time with the knowledge and resources that we had. So I have to give that version of myself grace because I didn't know anything. I just know what I saw. I didn't think I was going to share that today, but it just felt like 12 was a very pivotal time in my life for me. Like I was 12 in 2008. So 2008 was very pivotal. <gasps> that was also when the market crashed too. Not that, I mean, we almost lost our house during that. Like it was just hard. Like I think, I think looking back and now being a parent, our kids go through shit just as much as we do but kids the difference between an adult and a kid is kids they don't know what they're what's going on like we think we think that our parents I never thought that I was gonna ever admit that yet but it just shows that 12 for me was just such a there was such a pivotal point in my life and that was the start of middle school and middle. That's why I call it the dark days. Like it's for a long time, for a long time. I did not want to talk about middle school because I was really mean. I was nasty to people. I was drinking. Like I had my mom drop me and my friends off at the movies so we can go see a movie. But then we would go have these older guys do a beer run for us at the local Fred Meyer. And then we'd go to this Wood, wooded area called Mother Nature's Window that's now housing development I think and we would just get drunk in a field and we knew we had to be back to the movies by a certain time because that's when mom was going to pick us up and we'd find a little stub in the garbage at the movies and be like this is the movie we saw and then we would like look up what it was about or ask somebody what it was about or something it was just there was a lot of it was a hard time in my life for me and it I this version of me looks back at that version of me and just wants to give her a hug. It's hard. It's really hard. Because I was just I was just like on autopilot. Like I was just looking for anything that would make me that would fill the void and I hadn't been taught any other coping mechanisms so I just went based off what I saw and what was modeled to me because that's all I knew like if you think about it all we know as kids is what our parents show us or what the world shows us or what society shows us so it's just it's hard like I I kind of look at myself then like just with so much grace and empathy, like, I just want to give her a hug. I want to give 12-year-old Alexi a, a big-ass hug and be like, if only you knew 
where you'll be in if only you knew where you'll be in 15 years like it's all gonna be okay And it is. I love my life now. Like, I, I truly do have such a blessed and beautiful life. And I just have to thank God for that. That he used every single thing that had happened in my life and turned it for good. And I think that's just a true testament of God's grace. Because, to be honest with you guys, I could have easily been on drugs right now. Like, I could easily. I had two paths that I was trekking toward. I could either go down full bore the the drugs and alcohol and, you know, like I could, I could have, I was adjacent to that crowd. Like I could have easily gone down the hard drug route, but in middle school, at the end of it, going into high school, I was hanging out with my friend, Sam, and she was talking to this guy and the guy she was talking to had a friend named Jake and I met him and he is my angel like we dated for three years he has a new baby and I'm uh, hoping a wife now but or soon my friend Sam was dating this guy and he had a friend and me and that guy ended up dating for three years going into high school he was a senior I was a freshman and I remember so badly like just wanting him to like me and me not to be that that version of myself anymore like he really I do credit him for pulling me out of that because like he was going in my eighth grade summer I was hanging out with my friend Sam and Sam was talking to this other guy and then this guy she was talking to had a friend and both of these guys were going into their senior year of high school so I was going into freshman they were going into senior and it was really cool because when I met this guy, like, I just felt like I had this internal pull to be like, I want to be different. I want to change. Like, I want to make something of myself. Like, I want to go into high school and be a different person than I was in middle school. Like, I want to completely reinvent myself. And that's what I did. I joined the cheer team. I got a great group of friends. Like, I I really, I, I joined Running Star. I graduated high school with my associate's degree. I was working at Starbucks full-time, or part-time. I was working at Starbucks part-time, doing Running Start. The other half of it, I graduated high school with my associate's degree and with honors. It was just, it was just really cool to see like this change that I had and it sparked because of this one guy I met and he didn't ask for me to be any other type of way than how I was when we first met. But I and myself was like, you know what? I just like, this is going to be that catapult for me to be better. So I was, and I'm just so grateful that I'm so grateful that I met him and that we shared three years together. Like we shared a lot of experiences together and then we ended up breaking it off sometime in my senior year. And then, um, I started dating my now husband right after I graduated. So it was just really cool. And like, it was cool to, I owe the men in my life a lot of thanks I started date, and then I started dating my now husband in my senior, in the, in the winter after I graduated. So it was just really cool to be able to like make, reinvent myself. And I think that was a proving force now in my life. Like I look back at all the different versions of myself I was in my adolescence and just how much you can change, a person can change. And it was just really nice for me to get that reassurance and reaffirm it reaffirmation that like yeah you can be anything you want to be it doesn't matter where you came from you can you can make the changes necessary to be, to step into that version of you you want to be so when I met my husband when I started dating my now husband he was already 22 I was 18 so he had already been in the bar scene for a couple years and I got a fake ID I started going out with with him and all of his friends because they were all older already 21 and I wanted to fit in as much as I can I didn't want to be that girlfriend who was just sitting at home because she's a baby and she can't do anything yet so I got a fake ID (laughs) I was from Arizona and had never been there yet but one of our favorite things to do in the friend group was to go to Lake Chelan go wine tasting go to the bar like just our whole adventures revolved around camping and drinking 
and it was so much fun like that time of my life was so much fun like I really didn't feel like I had like a massive problem with it but then when my husband got sick right after we got married in 2017 for a couple years after that like my drinking it was my coping mechanism I I didn't know what else to do like I it just felt easier to just take a sip and let my worries wash away than to deal with all the problems I had like my husband was seemingly dying we were having family drama like it it just there was so much going on in my life that I just I didn't know what to do I again had never been taught the skills and resources on how to like regulate your emotions or handle them or what to do when you're feeling like any type of big feeling like in retrospect we tried going to therapy we tried doing all these things but like I still alcohol was my friend it helped me it helped me go into social situations it helped me feel more relaxed when I would go out and be around people that made me feel a little bit on edge it would help me forget about all my problems it helped just numb it helped me just numb out because reality in life felt too painful so fast forward, I quit, I, I gained like 20, 30 pounds with alcohol. And then I had my son, Noah, and he changed my life. Like being a mom is the greatest joy ever. Like it gives you so much more purpose. It puts that mirror back on you and be like, this, this is, this is how you are. And if you want to change it and not fuck up your kids, you got to change it. So you don't fuck up your kids. Like it is the greatest in most hardest thing I've ever done in my life. But after I had him, I was like, you know what? I, I don't want to repeat this curse. I don't want to repeat this pattern. And I kept feeling that internal pang of like, let's slow down. Let's slow down. Like, let's cut down on drinking. So then after I had my second son, Eli, 20 months later, I was really like, okay, I, I do not, do not want to be like this. I don't, I don't want to drink. I, w- I want to chillax. So I remember feeling that first, oh my gosh, guys, the first couple years of being a mom of two under two is, it's the hardest thing I've ever done in my life. It's so hard. Like you really give up your independence (laughs) because you have two little humans that depend on you for literally everything. And you're in survival mode as a parent being like, I need to keep these little humans alive. It's, it's really challenging. But I remember after I had Eli, I was like, I don't want to like, I don't like the feeling of drinking. I can make a laundry list of all the things things I don't like about drinking. So I really extremely cut back on drinking and I just became more California sober. And I really feel like I did get my life together in that way. Um, But then fast forward to this last summer in August, July, August. Fast forward to this last summer. I feel like I picked up the drinking again where it was just like, I'm just letting loose, having fun. It's summer, whatever. Gained 15 pounds back. And then the brand trip happened. I went on this brand trip. I did the, go listen to the podcast, Idiot Idiot, take Palm Beach, Florida. And you'll hear exactly all my drinking escapades and which I can laugh at now. But after we got back from that trip, it was this divine intervention from God where it was like, no, you're done. I mean, that was that day, that Wednesday was Wednesday, October 18th was the worst day of my life. (laughs) Just the way I felt the flying with anxiety and the hangover and me letting people down and disappointing people and just being irresponsible, like being super uh, uh, irresponsible idiot. Like that's how I felt. And there has been these whispers from time and time and time again, like, let's stop, let's cut down, let's quit like let's quit drinking and when I think about future Lexi Lexi when I'm 30 40 50 60 I don't want to be a bar fly I don't want to be that person who is still drinking for fun like I want to have a cocktail with my girlfriends every so often like that spicy mark but for me it's not worth it because I'm the type of personality when I get that one drink in me, I'm like, what's another one? I'll just stop at two. And then when you're at two, you're feeling that buzz and your care is down and you're like, fuck it, let's do three. And then you end up taking shots. You're at a dive bar. You're like being an irresponsible idiot. And then the next day you feel like shit 
And then for the next three days, you have all this anxiety about, oh my God, why did I do that again? I'm never drinking again. Like you guys know the cycle. And then someone texts you, hey, you want to go to happy hour? Yeah. And the cycle repeats itself. And after I got back from Florida, I'm like, no, this is it. This is this. I literally feel like God put me in this situation or I, I mean, okay, I put myself in this situation, but I feel like God used this situation to be like, no, like this book is closed. We're done because I didn't feel any hesitation to stop drinking. I didn't feel, I didn't feel any type of way about it. I was like, I'm done. Like I felt so at peace with it. Usually when I would tell myself that I'm going to be done drinking, I'm like all nervous and anxious. Like, oh my gosh, what do I tell people? And how do I tell them no and whatever? And this is what I've, what I've boiled down to for me. Alcohol was getting in the way of my goals. And so I needed to remove it because my goals are bigger than any cocktail I could have. The cocktail is like this fleeting dopamine rush that you get actually quite literally scientifically when you drink alcohol, your dopamine spikes and then it starts going back down and you get these low lows. You get the high high, but you also get the low lows. So then every drink you have, you're trying to get back to that first little hit of dopamine you had until you're fucking two sheets to the wind vomiting. And I'm a puker when I, when I drink too, which also is just so trashy Ugh. for me guys. And honestly, if you, this is my personal testimony. This is my journey. This is my story. This is how I feel about it. I want to let you sisters know, like, I don't judge you if you drink, but for me, I gave myself the ick with it. Like I could not look at myself in the mirror anymore. I was done being swollen and bloated and feeling like I was spiraling back into this place where I could only, you know, go if I had a cocktail or I needed to drink before or whatever because, you know, to let the nerves down because I had worked so hard to get out of that place and then I was starting to creep back into it. So after that trip, I'm like, we're done. We are done. And that's what I'll tell people. Like, I just, I don't drink anymore. And I want, I want to preface with this to a couple things come to mind. Number one, that's not to say I'm never going to have a cocktail again in my life. So if you're watching this 20 years down the road and you're like, bitch, you're drinking right now. That's a different version of me. The version of me right now, Alexi, 27 years old on Tuesday, November 21st. It's also my sister's birthday. Happy birthday, Allie. She doesn't drink she is working on herself. She is moving past hurdles in her life and the alcohol is what's holding her back. It's like this net that keeps me, I'm like a fish, like trying, like stuck in this net. Like I'm trying to get out and do something, but the alcohol is a net around me and it is a spirit guys. Liquor, alcohol for me is a spirit. It makes me a different person. That's why I have an alternate ego when I'm drunk. It's Stefani. It's like, haha, it's funny. But also at the end of the day, alcohol literally is a spirit. It goes in you, you lose control of yourself, you, you, you're wrecking your liver. (laughs) Like it's, it's, uh, I can make a list of reasons why I don't like drinking, but somehow I always end up with the spicy marg in my hand. I don't get it. But that's why I, I was like, you know what? I'm done. I'm taking time off. I'm doing this for me. I'm, I, who knows if I'm ever going to drink again at this point in my life. I, I don't want to, I don't have any desire because I know that my goals and where I'm going are so much bigger and better than any cocktail that could satisfy me for five seconds. And that was a really hard realization to come to. And it's hard because I know a lot of people and I built a lot of relationships around happy hours and bar hopping and drinking and, you know, like gossiping over liquor and just like letting loose and dancing and having a good time. Like it's really hard, but you don't have to give those things up also. Hi. My boys are here. Hey, I'm podcasting. Can you go outside? No, no. Turn that off. Can you go outside? I'm podcasting. Okay, I need you to be quiet. A lot of the things, a lot of the narratives that I hear around drinking are, it's dolphins. Can you please go outside? I will come out in just a minute. Okay, then I need you to be quiet and just stay right here and listen. Okay. I formed a lot of relationships around drinking and happy hours and going out and the party bus and the bar hopping. And I also want to say that I can still do that, but I don't have to drink to do that. Will I want to be doing that forever? I don't know. Probably not. But I would rather DD my friend around than 
have them try to drive themselves home. (laughs) But also a lot of the narrative that I hear, another reason why it's been so hard for me to quit is because another narrative that I hear all the time, Noah, another narrative that I hear all the time is go outside, buddy, go. Another narrative that I hear all the time is sober people are boring. And that was really hard because I didn't want to be labeled as boring. I I mean, like, I I genuinely feel like I'm fun with or without alcohol. But that's the people pleaser coming out in me like, oh, I need to I need booze to have fun or I need booze to be any type of way. And at the end of the day, you don't you don't need booze to be fun. Um, and I think a lot of time too, it it blows my mind because drinking is so glorified. Like it's so normal in our culture and it's, it's just, it's such, it can be so easy to spiral into something else, especially if you're using it as a coping mechanism like I did. So I don't want to say that I, I genuinely don't feel like I was like an alcoholic where I had like a massive issue with it, but if we are going to get technical with it, I was more of like a binge drinker. So I would not drink at all during the week, but on the weekends I'd have like four or five, six drinks and I would get drunk off of them. And then, I mean, that could go from Friday, Saturday, Sunday, like a three day bender on the weekends. And then Monday it's like, Oh, I'm never drinking again. I'm not doing that. And it's just the cycle. And it's so hard to break, especially when you've built drinking buddies around you, you, have the narratives that sober is boring around you. Like you have all of these thoughts and it's so, and then you watch TV and there's all these alcohol commercials. You open TikTok and there's people taking shots and going to clubs every night and people are like glorifying them for doing so. And they, their life looks so fun. And it's like, but I'm here behind the scenes, like struggling. And I know because I'm struggling because I know that in one side of my brain, like alcohol is literally poison. Your liver prioritizes it to get rid of it because it's poison. It lowers your ambitions. It makes you more likely for, to develop mental illness. It gives you irregular spikes. It gives you high highs and low lows in your serotonin and your dopamine. It takes out all ration. Like I could literally make a list of things I don't like about alcohol. But for the longest time, it was really hard for me to actually make that change. And so I think by taking something that was really embarrassing for me and it was very pivotal for me and being able to laugh about it and give myself grace and be like, okay, that was it. We're done. Like I've seen what I needed to see. And honestly, that's kind of the point I got to with alcohol is A lot of times when I would drink, there'd be these little, like, like I would make bad choices when drinking. There's, it's just, you know, it's always when drinking, it's just a bad choice, bad choice, bad choice. And then I finally got to a point where I'm like, I don't want to be that person anymore. I'm done making bad choices. Like what, what's going to be next? If I don't quit now, I don't change something now in my life. What is my life going to look like in 40 years as Lexi, the person who still drinks? I'm probably going to be the bar fly who's at the bars. And that's not what I want to be. Like, I want to be a wealthy, healthy, successful businesswoman who doesn't need alcohol to have fun, who's high on life, who's just, who's just, who beams God's light through her. Like, I don't want the light I beam to be alcohol and the spirit of alcohol. I don't want the light I beam to be the spirit of alcohol. I want it to be the spirit of God. And I know that this decision and choice, like, I know even me talking about this may trigger some people, and I know that this decision and choice is not for everybody, but I just wanted to be 100% transparent with you guys about where I'm at in my life right now. Like, it's it's been extremely challenging for me to get here, but I just feel so at peace with my decision, and I feel so good about it. And, like, even next weekend, one of my friends is doing her Dirty 30. I'm skipping the party bus thing. I'm trying to hit all of these events that I have in the day, but I'm going to meet them at the end of the night and celebrate with them and do karaoke with them and, you know, just like be in everybody's presence, but I don't have to drink to do so. Like, I I don't want to drink. I just, I'm at that point where I'm like, I've seen what I needed to see and I don't know, I don't want to know where it goes from here. I'm just done. So honestly, guys, 
this felt very vulnerable. Like this is probably the most vulnerable thing I've put on the internet and I, it's not easy to share. So I would just, I'd appreciate some kindness through this because it's not something that it's, it's not glamorous or pretty at all, but it's real. Like it's my life. It's the story of my life. And I just, I know that I can use all things for good in my life. I know that no matter how bad, I know how bad, I know no matter how bad life gets or the decisions I make or whatever, I know that everything is a lesson and it can be turned for good. Like I will never take a loss. I'm only going to take the lesson. So I hope if this inspired change in you or if there was any type of, I hope that if there was any sort of light bulb moment for you or you feel inspired or you empathize or anything I hope that you reach out and let me know because I feel I'm sitting alone right now recording this nobody's listening to me I'm just talking to you guys like let me know let me know if I'm sitting alone talking about this right now it does feel lonely but I'm talking to you guys and I know that this is pre-recorded and then I upload it and then you watch it but if you guys have any glimmer of hope that came through, any beam of light, light bulb moment, um, ins inspiration for change, anything, I hope you reach out to me and it will make me feel so much less alone and know that my screaming into the void isn't a void. It's There's actual people listening and hearing what I have to say on the other side. So if this helped you at all in any way, please share it. Uh, please DM me with your thoughts. Like I, I would just love to interact and talk about this because... I really do feel so alone in this. Like I, I do feel like I, I feel like I'm on my own little island here and it's, I mean, it's okay. I'm okay with being alone, but it would be nice if someone would join me. <laughs> I don't like being alone all the time. I don't think being alone, I think community is good. So if you are a sister who's in the same boat as me or looking to be in the same boat, maybe sober curious, maybe like this is something that I needed to hear and now I'm going to bite on this a little bit please let me know. I love you guys so much. Thank you for being here and listening to me week after week after week. Um, make sure to subscribe, leave five stars. Make sure to subscribe, leave five stars and drop me a review if you're on Apple or Spotify and drop. If you're listening on Spotify or Apple, leave five stars. If you're listening on Apple, drop me a review. And subscribe on YouTube if you are watching this live. I love you guys so much. You are the best sisters in the entire world. And I will see you next Tuesday.